Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just got a short video today, just running you through a fault with this 2017 Vauxhall Vivaro, uh, same as the Renault traffic. Basically, we've got check anti pollution on the dash, the spanner lights on, and the engine warning lights on as well. Now, we're using the snap on diagnostic machine on this one. Basically, we've done a full code scan. Now, it's got two fault codes which are stored in the engine ECU, a pre-eating code and a thermo plunger. Now, we can clear these codes out. These two codes here will actually stay out for about a week or two if I clear them. Um, but basically, once I've cleared them out, I can strike the ignition on. There'll be no fault codes in there. And the check anti-pollution, just straight back on the dash. Um, but if we scroll down, basically, you're going to need a decent diagnostic machine to do this. There's a separate ECU. Uh, with another fault in there which is the urea dosing unit which is basically for the adblue system and in there you can see we've got a fault dtc 3203 which is relating to the downstream nitrogen oxide sensor the NOx sensor so i'm just going to run you through i'll just show you where the sensor is located and how to replace it and i'll put links to some part numbers as well um, just before we get into the video, if you haven't uh, already subscribed to the channel, just click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. And I've got quite a few other videos on the Vivaro there, and a few others you might want to check out as well. Uh, but you can click the link above, or find that in the description below as well. Alright, so now that we've got the vehicle up in the air, if you just come underneath from the front, just to the back of the under tray, we've got the DPF here. DPF has a couple of temp sensors in it and some pipes for the pressure sensor. See the pressure sensor located up there. We've got the uh, add blue injector on this side. We've got knock sensor number one at the front there. And you can just come a bit further down the DPF. Further down the pipe, we've got knock sensor two located here. 22 mil spanner to under it, or a special tool that we'll just show you in a minute. And if you just root, the wiring comes over the top, over the top of the heat shield there. This ECU section is part of it. Just held on with a couple of 10mm bolts and just to undo the connector. So pull that tab down there, just flip that connector off there. I'll just show you the new sensor quick. Obviously, if you check the links in the description below, I'll put links to the part number where you get them from as well. You always want to be using genuine sensors, really. I have quite a few problems with some aftermarket ones. And then there's one of these little 22 mil crow's foot you can get an half inch drive in there just to get a decent purchase on the sensor to crack it off as well so i'm just going to get this all swapped over now and just run you through just clearing the code and just showing that's fixed it now that's that sensor too all fitted now just locate the wire over the top so just bolted the ECU section of it up and plugged it back in. All I'll do now is just drop the vehicle back down, clear all the fault codes, give it a run, just give you a quick update on it. Alright, so we've just come back from a 15 mile road test, let it cool down again, just struck it up to make sure nothing come back on. And um, we've got no fault lights at all on the dash. The emissions warning's not on there anymore. We've done a full code scan. We've got no faults in any of the ECUs. The two engine codes have cleared out. And back down to the uh, urea dosing unit, the codes have cleared out of there as well. So, so knock sensors definitely um, fix the fault. It's becoming quite a common issue now, so I thought I'd put a video together on it. So this one's knock sensor two. Um, you can have issues with the knock sensor one, the one that sits just behind the DPF as well. So, um, But to look at them, you can, it's hard to really fault them. I don't know if they just sort of pack up in the actual ECU section itself. So, um, But you always want to be replacing them with genuine parts. As I've heard of a lot of people have issues with aftermarket ones. So they are quite expensive units. Um, but again, if you want to check out links in the description below, I put links to the part number for sensor two. I put links to sensor one and the part number as well. So, uh, but yeah, I thought I'd put the video together. Hope you liked it. If you did, give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.